Não. Não. Ok. It has started. Oh, sweet. Okay, this is the meeting on Friday, December 8th, uh, 2023. Let's start with attendance. Let's start with you. Uh, Kristen Nergard here. John Nelson here. <coughs> Naomi here. Uh, Danny Palacios here. Alejandro Casillas here. Michael Warner here. Uh, Gabe is present. He is had to step away to take a call. Um, let's start with the mission. Who wants to read it? Go, Kristen. All right. To support the evolving needs of the MSU Denver students by advocating in their best interest to enhance the university experience and opportunities. Thank you. So we have the faculty units here. And since we don't have quorum, we can't even prove the agenda. I gotta have them speak to us. Yeah. Because we already agreed to put, send our updates online. And we have a lot of students coming in for public comment. Do we have? Uh, but we'll we'll be here, right? So we'll have we'll have quorum later. to vote. Yes. Okay. But to respect their time as well. Yeah. I say we we put them. Yeah. Agree. That's fine. Sounds good. Okay. Okay. Um. <laughs> well, so we're just waiting point. then. <laughs> <laughs> we're just waiting. <laughs> yeah. We could do a little bit of announcements. Give us a we literally can do anything. Yeah, we can. I mean, sorry, we can do announce uh, updates and announcements. If I just say it real quick, um, so send me the updates, so I can put them in. Yeah, we're still like we're still gonna do updates while we wait for people. Okay. Yeah, and then whatever, whenever we don't get to, then we will send to you. Mike, what do you got? Um, so graduation is next um, week, next Friday. So I'll be in graduation all day up on the stage with the Vance Rose. Okay. So I'll see, I'll see how graduate this do that. Okay. Um, and then I hop on a play to South Carolina afterwards. But um, I met with the budget office on student fee review. Sorry about that. And what they basically said is, um, we can propose a new fee. It's a lengthy process to do so, um, but we can't. We do have the power to do that. And it goes to like an election. To, it's a lengthy process, but the students have some say in it and how we do fees around here. So that's saying the Rowdy's course is fixed, but, but if we needed, we could do it like a fee process if it wasn't resolved, but it's resolved. So that's it. So yeah. Do you have a little information in the tuition part that I talked about? What about it? What do they say? I had to jump out early and I just turned. Sure. Did they mention anything about tuition? No, just fees. Just a piece. Okay. I'll take it later. Sweet. Kristen. Um, we don't have an update for St. Kevin right now. We changed our meeting time to uh, following this meeting. So after we have that meeting today, uh, I'll send maybe updates so that he can, or I can also put them in the chat. We'll go to both places, but there will be updates eventually. And we are still tracking the RTE thing, and I do plan on bringing it up today. So I have not forgotten yet. Cool. Bree is coming. We'll go back to him. Alejandro, do you have anything? <laughs> uh, no, I don't have anything for that. Okay. Matt, and I'm with. I'm with. I'm. I'm switched to uh, the PR committee. So. Matt and I have been working on the um, um, what is that? What, what is the name of that supermarket? King Super. Yeah. King Super app. Okay. Uh, making sure. Right. To, come down. So, okay. to to get that app circulated, uh, so the students can start putting in their phone numbers, and every time when they use their phone numbers, so much money or credit is given back to the Rowdy's Corner. Oh. So I set it up myself. Well, I set up myself with my account. To start using it and also i need to tell students too it does not count when you're using ebt it's only with cash oh yes so i found that out by going through it personally and then talking with matt so okay okay then we should change that flyer and add that to it good okay 
Um, Naomi, how's your project going? It's been really hard to like keep up with stuff. I'm thankful for Gabe, even though you probably can't hear me right now. Um, <laughs> uh, we did uh, come up with them. I have to now send out um, a budget request from all these departments that are already putting money towards um, like feminine products. So we're thinking that maybe instead of doing like a student fee implementation or something like that, create a whole new budget, why not take money that's already in the university going towards these things, collaborate, put it together, and then use that as like um, an aid in convincing the institution to implement these um, pieces of, uh, or to, to start implementing these dispensers in the institution. Um, so, I'm still going to continue this even after I'm off TSAC and hopefully I can just like continue to pass this like, like on to the next person in the sustainability committee since I won't be able to serve this semester. Um, but it, it, they have a really great foundation for where this is already going. Um, we do need to hold an event at some point. Um, well, TSAC will need to hold an event at some point next semester to get the opinions of some students before they take this to um, the like higher ups and AHEC and all that to find out like what would be the safest way to implement these dispensers in a way that doesn't help or that doesn't um, put students in harm's way who experience their periods but don't necessarily appear feminine if that makes sense um because we just want to make sure that anybody who experiences their period has access to these um dispensers and is also not going to be harassed for it because you know i'm not going to sit here and say that we're a perfect institution like it could happen behind closed doors and I don't want that to be a thing. So we're gonna to try to get the opinion of the students who it affects the most uh, with an event that we have um, had some advice and guidance on from uh, Tyrell in the LGBTQIA plus center. Yeah. So the next step I said would be to send out that email, which I should have did last week and I didn't. So we're getting that. And also to answer your future question here, Mike, Paul has not come to that, but I also haven't taken the authority <laughs> to reach out to him once again, because I, don't have the capacity. Like I said, I'm barely keeping up with the project as it is. And thankfully, Gabe has been a huge help and um, backbone to that project as well. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Would you just send us an email with whoever we need to send that email to? Because you're going to be graduating. Yeah, I'll still send out that email. Well, to Tyrell, you said, right? Well, yeah, and I'm still going to work with Gabe on it even after graduation. Okay. Like, because as my understanding, um, you don't have to be in TSAC to A, get resolutions done and to do the advocacy work yourself. It's just if we want it to get pushed to like further higher authorities within like the hierarchy here at MSU Denver, it kind of has to go through y'all to like make a difference. So that's what I'm going to do. And since they've already established relationships with these people, I would prefer to keep it that way. That way they're not confused. I'm not confused. And but I want whoever comes in on the next sustainability, I want them to be involved too. So they get like an idea of what this looks like and if they want to future implement anything. Else. There's a core. Sweet. Thanks. I read things to work. Spirit. Sorry. No, you're good. Did we? Do we have corn? We do, yes. It's, but Gabe's not on it yet. Yeah, uh, do we look to corn? Huh? No. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Seven. I apologize that I'm late. No, it's okay. It's okay. okay. We have eight? Yes. Okay, but we still need Gabe to say he's here. here before. He's in his call still. Well, I'm here. In, a, in a minute. Wait, is Gabe on GSAC too? What? I thought he was just SACAP. No. You have to be in you <laughs> have to be in GSAC to be in SACAP. <laughs> Bro, this whole time I'm so done. I, I am too. That's crazy. Okay. Open floor announcements. <laughs> Kristen, you had something, right? For open floor announcements on the RTD thing? No. Um, no, those are gonna. We're, I'm gonna bring that up in open floor announcements what for SACAB. Okay. Um, because it was my understanding that you wanted backing, like try institutionally and from AHAC. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. Well, we we are in open floor announcements. I have a question. Um, whenever we get our resolutions passed, who do these go to again? Like when we pass them? <laughs> it's like it's you're like, killing me. Yeah, I know. Listen. <laughs> like, okay, so at one point I was told it gets sent to faculty senate. Then I get told it sends to um like uh 
Janine Davidson's office, but I don't know what part of her office. So like, I'm just confused exactly how it works because I've never had to do it. Or a board of trustees is the other one I've heard it goes to. Well, you're the one specifically that you're asking, like the one today? No, just any of them. Any of them. Well, it depends what the resolution uh, is. Like, oh yeah. Like if yeah. the one do you want specific today goes to Janine, like the statement would be made to Janine. Sorry, <laughs> stop, sorry, President Davidson. Matter. I think I have discretion whether I can bring if I want to bring it up to trustees, but no one's also asked me. So okay. if you don't ask me to bring it up, I'm not gonna bring it up. Well, we right. could we could make a friendly amendment to it and to bring that to the oh. board of trustees as well. Yes, Kenny. Okay, since we is here, um, we did go over to the share. Oh yeah. Do me a favor, Kenny. Speak up so I can hear you. <laughs> 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 oh my god, what's happening today? I told you that. You remember those books? Three hours the juice shirt. Sure. There's people. <laughs> Do you? It's true. It's true. Do you want to? Do you have an update for the Judiciary Committee? I. There is a letter that's going to be going out. I'm going to talk with my team first, and then I've already had feedback from our advisors on it. And for our absent students to adhere to. So I'll be sending that today to my two team members so that hopefully we can get immediate response. Yeah. Thanks, Bree. Mm -hmm. Hello, Mike is. Oh my goodness. Maria, question. Are the absent members aware of their situation? This I do not know unless they're watching the recordings, which- Are they uh, notified of it? They have not. And that's what this is going to do. This is going to be the first official notice coming from our committee to them. And I was waiting on feedback. Didn't, didn't our advisors get notification? Oh, that's oh, true. Yes. yes. That's true. From the advisors. Yes. Have they been, did they respond to you? I'm going to attach to our new um, amendment that outlines all of this as well in case they haven't been able to look at that. So, on that okay okay back to open for announcements anyone on that yes so um i know i mentioned last meeting that a student wanted to come present um, a little more about the rtd um idea proposal but seeing that how much we got to talk about today um, i told them to save it until the next meeting so in the beginning of the spring semester so um yeah that's about it are kind of the details that they were going to be presented on included in the initial email that you sent out just for like one item? Uh, yeah, ideally. So that's basically everything that he has. I guess as of right now, he's just trying to see who to talk to and how to present it to them and stuff like that. Okay. So yeah, I mean, then and then with SACAB, it's just more of getting um, support from the other institutions and also from AHEC and RTD to allow us to add like an extra stopper route and all that. And oh, you have something directed to Iza? No, I'm just answering. Okay, can I? Yes, go ahead. Do my direct comment real quick. Um, I did contact the developers, the private developers. Uh, there's an alumni in there. I haven't gotten word yet, but that's that's the take on page I'm approaching. So when you get word, you and I should get together. <laughs> yes. Cool. I have a, so I checked in something for you. I forgot her name. It's for the like the compensation committee. Mm -hmm. That was supposed to be the up back uh, mm -hmm. representative's responsibility. That's Thomas. Mm. So it got pushed onto me and I didn't quite realize it. So that's good to know. Yeah. So that was his thing. I remember. When you, where and her am I going to that instead? No, no, this mm -hmm. is the, the committee came up in the up back, uh, up back committee because mm -hmm. it's a separate branch. You're right, it's a compensation. Well, so, yeah. it was the compensation committee. Now it's called total reward. Yeah, so that's that's what happened. So, okay. so what does that mean now? It means that we should get some people who should go to that. Yeah. Over, it is important. We should overwhelm the people who have a lot of committees already. I know. I we might sell that today. Okay. Do you know when that committee meets? 
It's like once a month. It, it's yeah, like month. it's like bi-weekly. They're going to move the, the meeting time on it, too. Um, it's on Wednesdays at 10, um, and it goes from 10 to 11. Mm-hmm. Sorry. Do you have a do you have a meeting like times of what days and times? I do. I do. Can you there we're looking at changing the time because it doesn't work for a lot Yeah. So. so if it's like a better time, I could probably make it, but yeah. I was in class then. So yeah, I know. Okay. Okay. Well, whenever you guys get the card sheet, send it on C4. Yeah, we should do like a committee review in the new year. Let's see what, see what we're doing. Part of our leadership. Like get rid of some things. Mm-hmm. There's sure. too much. There's too much. Mm-hmm. Well, for the four people. Have we considered, like, does it only, because you know what we keep running into is that like we have all these committees, right? But they're, they're really important, but we don't have enough students to serve on them. And I know there's like a thing in here for volunteers, but like, also, why don't we just consider upping how many TSAC members we have? Because like, then we don't have to worry about making quorum. Money. Money. Okay. Well, one is money, and the other, it's like there is a lot of there's a lot of us. There's just not a lot of bandwidth. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like a lot, of, yeah. A lot of degrees are challenging, and they take a lot of people's time, yeah. which is the stairs. Just a lot, and from every single direction. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, for the faculty and stuff. Oh, are we are we okay with cool? I mean, it's cool with that open announcements. Um, I do think Gabe is back. So if we wanted to approve the agenda really quick, we might be able to. Sweet. Okay, let's approve the agenda. So then I'm gonna motion to, in a minute, if everyone's okay, uh, to strike whatever is left of the committees and just send them out. And then just yeah, send them out. Okay. I think Dr. Should do her advisory. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's approve the agenda. Approve the agenda. The agenda. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we're approved, we're motioning to approve the agenda and strike everything except for advisor updates. Yeah. Mike, will you make the motion? A motion, please. I motion that we approve the agenda, and on the, but we strike everything except the advisor updates. Sweet. Okay, let's vote. Any more? Everybody who agree. Bye. Oh, Gabe, do you want to say you're here? I'm here. I'm here. Let the record show. Must the record show that you. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, guys. Thanks. Uh, yeah. Um. Sweet. Okay. And then no abstentions. Any opposition? Sweet. Okay. Dr. Burrow. Sure. Um. The only well. Yeah. The only real advisor update I have is I sent you all a calendar invite for January 11th just to hold the time. That time might be modified a little bit as I'm um, slotting in um, presenters for that day, but I want to leave some work time because some work needs to happen on that day that I think is really important. And so just so you all know, you should have an outlook outlook invite from me for January 11th. Please do respond so that I know how to plan um, for space and food and anything else we need to have on that day. Um, So there's that. Um, And then the other thing, there was something else that was important. I don't remember. Oh. I did reach out um, to the folks that were in um, danger or had were close to either three unexcused absences of their um, of these meetings um, and or who've exceeded that. And so Armando um, and I talked and we will not be processing stipends. And just so, as a reminder for everyone, if you do not attend more than three meetings um, that are excused or whatever, then we're making the executive decision to not um, process the stipend for that that month. So just as a reminder on that for next year. Wait, is that for just for students who uh, don't, just for the um, just for the members who don't attend those or is that for the entire TSAC? Um, for the entire TSAC. Like if, if you don't show up to three meetings without communicating or having, you know, let the council know that you're not going to be here um, and why, you know, then there, then but that will not. But that not student who's missing, that's the one who loses their site, but not yeah. the other. Yes. That's yeah. 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 <laughs> I was like, damn, yeah. we really don't pay for one person to say that's crazy. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. They lose their site. Okay. Yeah. Um, and just so you all know, Armando's um, in class right now. I think both, most of you were here earlier, so that's where he's at right now. Um, and 
I don't know. I just felt like it's the end of the semester. There's a lot um, going on as we're wrapping things up right now. Um, so let me know what you all need from me. I'm, I'm, my schedule is really packed right now with a lot going on. But if we need to connect like with the co-chairs before the end of the semester, then let's try to give it some time next week. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Sweet. Let's move on. Uh, huh? I didn't want to. I'm sorry? I didn't go oh, okay. Uh, let's just keep going and then we will pass out one and we'll keep going after. The public comment is done. Sweet. Okay, new business, voting spring semester chairs. <laughs> yeah, it's that time. <laughs> <laughs> So they nominate these. <laughs> the same thing. Yeah. So. Okay. Any Let's start. Let's do any nominations. Mike, do you want to start this? Yes, I think we should nominate. But also, I propose a quick, slight adjustments. I think we should have done this in the beginning of the semester. We have co-chairs. We really should have a, a chair and a vice chair. I think it just adds the more, like, directness to what we're doing, and like, it's a. Loki, how it operates anyway. So I think like we should make that change. I would like to counter that only because I feel like it's still a very colonialistic way of doing things. And we have tried our best to try to like dismantle that system piece by piece with everything that we do. And I think that we've done a good job of that. I do think that I agree with him though, and saying that like it already operates like that. So even though we're changing the title, we're not doing anything to back it. So maybe if we are gonna do keep the co-chairs, we need to actually make it to where they're co-chairing things instead of like putting a lot of responsibilities on one person or the other. I think that that's, would be fair. The reason for it is we to do different circumstances. We it's a small amount of people on the council doing all the work, and I rather have so like for an example if you're a committee chair like events or like PR mm -hmm. that's a big chair. And you're also a co-chair. That's a lot to kind of. I don't want to get like it's it's lost trust in that person. Yeah. Whereas like we have one chair. That's their one job. So we should make it instead of that. Then why don't we just make it like if you're co-chairs, that's the only thing you can do. Like it's nothing you can be allowed to be. Like you can't be on other well, committees. Then. That's impossible. I have like four committees and I'm exactly. still a chair. But, but I, that's I, what I'm like, trying to say though is like that's the stress that you're putting yourself under. So maybe like if we made sure that they were just doing co-chair things then we wouldn't have those stresses on them and maybe like it would run more smoothly or they would have the responsibilities that only they are designated to handle. You know what I mean? So then who's going to do the other four committees that I'm doing? And like, that, that's, the, that's, that's, the, the that's, the, that's the other thing, but it looks like you already put something in here for recruiting student volunteers for committees. So maybe that's not something you'll have to worry about because those responsibilities could potentially be taken up by the students who are considering volunteering for these committees that you're already on. Anyone? Yes. Thoughts? I like for me personally, I definitely understand what you're saying 100%. Um, for me, it just comes back to like how many people, like if we are going to be like replacing some of our committees, but I don't think we're replacing like committee chairs. No, this is just for co chairs. Um, so, like, I just don't know if we have enough people, especially enough people that actively participate to like have the chair be like exclusive. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, that's, like, that's what I'm saying. saying. No, yeah, and like, I can I agree, but that's also why I was trying to say that like, why don't we like obviously we can't now recruit I understand why we can't recruit more TSAC members so like budgeting and all that but like can our volunteers be like chairs then no so it has that's to be a lot that's a lot someone chairs. Also, but it's not getting a stipend yeah. I have Gabe on the on the stack Gabe awesome thank you okay so so I I think there's good in both different ways that we go about it I think it's just kind of up to us um, to decide what it is that we want with these chairs, right? So do, do we want one person who's leading the meeting most and we just have a backup? Is that how like we want it in this like chair vice chair situation? Or do we want two people who, who, who are leading the meeting at the same time, right? Like like how would it look? How, how would those differences be um, between like the role of the vice chair and chair and versus the co-chair model? Yeah, the way traditionally it would work, do you mind? Is that the vice chair just takes over for the chair and the chair's out there. Yes. And like and like helps out the chair if needed. Um it's not really a big I don't think you said this perspective. 
yeah. the co chair is already that. Yeah. So you know, and like we're already a council mm -hmm. that like the majority rules. Yeah. Like the chair doesn't have any power over us. Yeah. And if Denny was just the chair, it's there's like that really, it's just a title at this and point. It's a formality. Be, yeah. And it's less confusing because people know Denny's the person to go to. Yeah. Yeah, like administration. Okay. The, yeah. I can get that. Yeah. yeah. I, so, um, it, yeah. I do think that if you're going to be chair then i think maybe we should limit the amount of committees that you're on then that would even focus on your chair like core responsibilities like maybe not like you know take on if you yeah. like if you can handle four committees which obviously you can that's great but then like maybe we should limit it to like if you're holding the chair position the responsibilities that come with that maybe limit it to like three committees you're the chair on you know what i mean yeah yeah and i think that's a can go right retreat as well is like uh, equal distribution yeah, yeah. yeah. But it sounds like i believe you some of your concern yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. We'll see. And I, and I'm, I'm thinking about what Naomi said, and and we follow a tradition when that doesn't really, really seem to work. With the co-chair splitting the duties is is much more less stress on the person as opposed to one person takes all the control and then the second person. They're not, so like the way he was explaining it just now, I was like they're not really taking, um, like they're they're not splitting up responsibilities it's just like it, it really depends on what committees they sign up for right. so like if they didn't sign up for the committees then all the stress that they have as chair is just on them but if they sign up for multiple like committees then that's going to cause more stress but they also can't divide up that responsibilities because they're on different committees so like they can't really do the other person's job but okay. that's why i said we should limit the chairs to how many committees they're uh, allowed to sign up on so they pick like their top three or i think we should just honestly put it at three i feel like three is a good number i think uh, when just from my personal experience of what has happened this last semester yeah. i did not think any committees directly related to TSEC. I did the academic policy, I did UPAC, mm -hmm. uh, because those are things that like allow me to set up my schedule for right. those, but I am not doing any like yeah. PR relationship yeah. or like budget things because yeah. I, I don't have the time for that. Exactly. So I think that makes sense. whoever is doing it has to be very strategic about what decisions they're taking and where they're putting their time. Yeah. So maybe should we like have an evaluation of like what they like what they're already involved in outside of TSAC? Because that that would be like that's me like right there. I take on way too much responsibility. Hold on. Um Kirsten, oh sorry. I it kind of like going off of what you're saying. Um, I definitely agree with you. I think it is largely like as we're working through the nomination process, it's that person's like own personal responsibility mm -hmm. to kind of like look at themselves and look at what they're doing next semester. You have and it like just so you know. Sorry. And I'll try to talk fast. <laughs> okay. um, and try to like decide um, if they can take it on. And then by taking it on, that person is assuming the responsibility for being able to kind of shift their schedule around. And the way that I see like the vice chair position is helping to support the chair. Yeah. Um, so that um they can like have those things like stay possible. Yeah. Take track of see and like I agree. Go ahead. To make a motion that might solve your problem real quick. Mm -hmm. I motion that we operate next semester as a chair vice chair system mm -hmm. with the asterisk that those roles are defined at our retreat that's on the agenda for our retreat mm -hmm. agree with the okay. said requirements and um, yeah limitations. and we'll, 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 we'll vote it in as a community at a retreat as that sounds that sounds good yeah, yeah. okay let's vote real quick everybody who agree we, uh, I, 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 Oh. <laughs> okay, well, then we're going to have to uh, table, table this real quick because it's one o'clock. Is that okay? Okay, yes. Yeah. Just hold it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. It is one. We have the faculty union in house, and then we also have some students uh, online. Would you guys like to go first? Do you want to hear from students first? Yeah. Okay. Hi, Leah. Uh, Please let me know if I am uh, seeing your guys's name, uh, your guys's name right. Um, Leah, would you like to go first? Introduce yourself. Just let us know why you're here. Oh, Layla. Oh, my bad, Layla. I can't read. I'm so sorry. Where's she? Oh, there she is. Okay. Yeah, I'm seeing you. What's the name? Oh, oh, Angel, Angelica. Angelica. Yeah. Angelica. Angelica. It's Angelica. Hello. Yeah, th thank you for the correction. Angelica, would you like to just introduce yourself and tell, uh, tell us why you're here? Yes, my name is Angelica Aguirre. I'm a Chicano Studies major graduating in next week. Uh, I'm here because uh, I want to make everyone aware that the department chair of Chicano Studies is getting removed from department chair and 
we want to voice our grievances against that. Um, can you express maybe why to us? Like, not, not your grievances, but do you know why they're getting removed? I, well, I, I just yes? give me one sec. So we, yeah, sorry, we have a, uh, like a five minute per person. So I'm gonna start that now. And then yeah, I'm gonna let you go ahead for five minutes. I'm sorry, I'm having technical difficulties. Can Do you mind if I log back in real quick? Yes. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Thank we'll you. Wait for you. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Then I have Layla. Are you still there? I don't hear. Okay. Michael. I'm here. Oh, Layla. Okay, Layla. Would you like to introduce yourself? And again, there is a limit of uh, five minutes per person. Would you like to introduce yourself and tell us why you're why you're here? Oh, I'm just here in support of Adriana Nieto, um, the chair of uh, Chicano Studies, so. OK. OK. M Michael, would you like to introduce yourself? It's the same for me. I'm also in support of Dr. Nieto and wanted to be present for the conversation. Beautiful. Would either of you to be able to fill us in on what is going on? I only have rumors. I, you know, have heard a brief snippet at a, a faculty meeting yesterday in my department. Um, only because we have um, Dr. Nieto's spouses in our department, and so, but I, I am not a first hearer of that news, so I'm, I, I don't have a whole lot that I could offer there. Just, just what I've read here that there was a removal, and I don't know why. I see. Okay. Thank you, Michael. Angelica, I see that you're back. Uh, do you want to fill us in what's going on? Maybe. Yes, sorry. I'm I'm having a lot of trouble with my laptop. Um, OK, so. On Wednesday, November 8th, Dr. Nieto had an interaction with HR where she expressed her frustrations about not receiving support in regards to her benefits as faculty at MSU Denver. And then on December 5th, Dr. Nieto received a letter that informed her she was being removed as chair beginning December 22nd of this year. Some of the reasons that were cited were that she criticized the institution, not only as a faculty, but as a mother and as a private citizen, and that her personal complaints were called were called aggressive and they were racialized as far as her actions. Um, they were called that they they were called hostile and as if she was a threat. Also, we didn't get any notice, and that is especially heartbreaking as a student who is graduating next week and as a student who is taking finals it, it was just sprung up upon us like we didn't have an opinion we didn't have a say and it's just i'm at a loss for words because just yesterday i got a postcard in the mail from msu denver trying to recruit my daughters and it says change makers wanted. And I feel like you can't be a change maker unless you make some waves. And Dr. Nieto is exactly embodying that. And so I don't know how they can just, how the dean has so much power of just wanting to take her away like that from a community that needs her and can't go on and be the same without her. I know there's peers in support of this on the way there to the meeting and, I, and they, they have more information. So um, I know they should be there any minute. Thank you, Angelica. Angelica, would you like to tell us, like, are you a student here? Yes, I am a student. My major is Chicana, Chicano Studies, and I'm, okay. I'm graduating okay. next week. OK, awesome. Thank you. Sorry, I completely missed that part. I appreciate it. Thanks. Hey, Angelica. Thank you. Um, my name is Naomi Hawkins. Um, if you wouldn't mind, I would like to talk with you separately about what we can do to combat this from a larger perspective of student engagement. I will be off TSAC next semester, but that doesn't mean we can't fight for her. So if you wouldn't mind, can you drop your email in the chat and then I'll reach out to you after the meeting? Yes, absolutely. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Sweet. Okay. I can't 
Okay. We have some ideas. We have ideas. Yeah, Denny and I met with some people this morning. Yeah, we have ideas. I got long of ideas. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I got Great. Okay. 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 And then I have I have someone else. Oh, okay. Hi. Would you like to introduce yourself as well and tell us why you're here? I don't want to murder. Oh no. no we oh. Hi. I, Hi. Me. Yeah, we can see you. Okay. Uh, sorry, I couldn't um, see what was going on in the offline uh, meeting. So I thought maybe uh, you were talking to somebody else. Um, so yeah, I am also um, similar to uh, Michael and Layla here from the art department where um, we learned about the news of uh, Dr. Nito being demoted through um, one of our colleagues. And from what I heard, and also what, um, uh, sorry, uh, one of the students, Angelica, um, from Chicano Chicano Studies uh, just shared, to me, it seems to be a very blatant example of gendered and racialized um, abuse of power from the administration and the dean, uh, who has not been very uh, transparent and open in his communication with us or um, has not set very good examples in terms of communication in general. Um, and the ways in which how Dr. Nito has been told to work on her quote unquote behavior modification um, is very problematic, not just for uh, her as an individual or the department, but as collectively as an institution and broader as a community or even higher education in America in general is a serious threat to um, academic freedom, I believe, as well as um, DI uh, rights and issues. Um, honestly, I am speechless as how this could be even possible institutionally and legally. Um, and the very function of providing tenure to faculty members is precisely to be to allow faculty members to speak their mind against these kinds of concerns political economic um punishment retaliation and it isn't i don't think about the content not or at least not just about her the content of her um grievances, her speaking in advocacy, uh, not just for herself, but also in general, the well-being of faculty here, but also uh, the tone that has been uh, made into a problem by the dean is, I think, very problematic here because of the history of people of color, especially women of color, marginalized communities have been uh, rendered problematic because of uh, the ways in which we are, you know, seen as angry, problem, you know, aggressive, um, etc. Thank you. We have it is one ten. I am going to motion that we extend it by twenty minutes. I agree. I agree. I agree. Uh, second, second. Okay. Um. Yeah. Everybody who agree. Aye. 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 Sounds unanimous. Uh, sweet. Okay, and then we have. Is there anyone? Everyone on here? Beautiful. Okay, we have people on here too. Hello. Hi. Hello. Which other of you would like to start introduce yourself? Uh, I think we actually we kind of work together to tell the story we want to tell. And Angelica, um, she's online. Yeah. So she's she's on on first, yeah. Oh, Angelica. Okay. Okay, Angelica. If you want to start, do you guys want to? Since you're a collective, you guys want to just introduce yourselves real quick, and then we'll okay. we'll do this. Um, yeah, we're students and alumni. Elizabeth, I'm Percy. Um, I'm Lopez. I am a history major, um, secondary education high schooler, currently looking to get into the Thank you. Thank you. And, and, and if you're ready to go, we're, we're ready. I actually already said my piece, so if you all, I set you all up. <laughs> keep going. Um, so basically, since you guys already know the situation, um, 
We are currently looking at the faculty um, handbook, and I kind of did my research on the handbook. Um, but we generally fail as a department, and I'm also speaking of the JTOH student org here on campus. We couldn't make it, but they're in the the Journey Through Our Heritage. Oh, We're right. a part of the Chicago Studies Group. Yeah. yeah. Um, so we just feel like there's levels to this. And I feel like it's always when women of color and Chicano women speak out that it becomes a situation where we're seen as aggressive were seen as a threat. And I don't understand why, because the situation that took place was on behalf of her own son. So it had nothing to do with her work, had nothing to do with her students. However, as a student under her, the same way she was advocating for her own son is the same advocate, advocate that she does for us. Because I know that this semester, I was supposed to be doing work study through um, the Chicago Studies Department, but financial aid messed up my whole entire um, situation with that and Dr. Nieto went above and beyond to get that reinstated for me so that my senior year I can do work study next semester because she understood that I was struggling to maintain a full-time job while also going to school so to be able to alleviate myself from that stress she went above and beyond and advocated the same way she does for her children for us and in the policy handbook it talks about levels of disciplinary action. Um, disciplinary action either has to be major or minor. And a minor disciplinary action would come to the result to a written reprimand. And a major would be something as much as demoting her of the chair. I personally don't feel like the situation is unfit. I um, have seen the letter. And that is why us as a community, as students, as a mom are coming together because we don't agree with her. We don't feel like what she was saying was out of line. Anything that she was saying, we can also agree to because we have these conversations. And it feels like the Chicano Studies Department is always given the end of the stick. You know what I mean? We can't even get a sign that says Chicano Studies Department. It has to be rectory. Why don't we have our own department sign to express that this behind us? Um, it always feels like we're targeted, as well as even policies within our building. You can't even get a front door scanner. Dr. Nieto has to come out of pocket for that, or the Department of Chicano Studies has to come out of pocket. But didn't the university instate the fact that all doors have to be accessible by an ID and it has to have a lock? Mm -hmm. Us as Chicano Studies Department can't get a lock on our door, so now our door is free, open. And, and with the only way we can access it is through the back. But nobody knows that because the front door is the main entrance to enter a building, right? right. Um, so that's an issue we're having. And we just feel like also within the faculty employee handbook, it does talk about when evaluating causes of action, all reviewing bodies and supervisionary levels shall independently consider the impact of investigation and sanctions on the academic freedom inherent in the role of all tenure. Anybody or individual beyond the complaint recommending investigation or imposing sanctions shall explicitly note their analysis of the academic freedom impact in the recommendations or in their justification of the imposition of sanctions. That has to do with the fact that they have to base it off the principles. And when I went and read the principles of the legality of what they did, it's out of range and simply because her speech was protected as a citizen. Mm -hmm. Teachers, Professors, faculty members are still citizens at the end of the day. Her speech was her speaking as a mother, which is a private citizen in the community. It has nothing to do with her chair. I would understand if she was throwing F-bombs at the university, at your boss, at HR, at everybody. She wasn't saying that. All she simply said was, if I had the money to afford to send my son anywhere else, do you think I wouldn't? She just said, and she didn't, I should probably say it in her direction. She said, if I could pay full tuition, you think I'd send my son here? Nowhere in that statement, I feel like it's credits. It's just saying, you know what, me as a mother, if I had the money, I wouldn't. Why are we having this argument as a Chicano Studies Department, as students, as a mom, when we're supposed to be a Hispanic serving institution? 
Why are we not being funded? And this is a Hispanic serving institution. We're used as poster child to talk about Hispanic Heritage Month, to talk about equity and division and all of this stuff. We're used as the poster children to sit there and say, oh, we have a community. They love to put JTOH's work on CNN, or not CNN, CBS, the news, you know what I mean? They like to bring them in. When Dr. Renee just recently did her history Colorado exhibit, what did they do? First thing they did was make sure you market it as Metro State. Make sure you always add our name in. Why do we have to recognize a university that can't even recognize us? It's unfair. It feels like not even just the fact that you guys are coming for our department chair, you're coming for all of us because now us as students, we feel like we have to silence ourselves. We feel like we can't express ourselves. And at the end of the day, let's not forget as students, we fund these people's paychecks. The reason why they have jobs in this institution is because of us. No us equal no them. Without us, this institution wouldn't exist because the institution is to serve the students. My tuition pays to serve this campus. And I feel like I should be represented by the department chair that I feel seen by, that I feel respected by, by someone who is willing to work and go the extra mile for us. She is very good at advocating for the faculty on her team. She's good at advocating for the students on her team. She's good at advocating for the community as a whole. Mm -hmm. So taking her, and she's the backbone of our community, feels like an insult, feels very targeted, feels very, feels like systematic racism. And it also feels like sexism because why does a Latina expressing herself in an understandable sense of frustration always seen as a threat, as a threat. How do you feel harmed? How do you feel threatened? Because she raised her voice. She said some remarks that criticizes the university. At the end of the day, she's still a mother. She's a mother first before she's a faculty member. Mm -hmm. And she was in HR because they kept giving her the runaround because why are HR supposed to be, we're here remote and they get to not they get to not be here? I thought they were human resources. It's literally in their name. Why are you working remote, but you're not here on campus? No one can access you. She goes in trying to get some information because as a student, we understand the runaround we get with financial aid. Right. Imagine the runaround we get with human resources. You know what I mean? And that's the issue we're having. It's just, there's a lot of, yeah. There's a lot of the, I didn't even get to all of it, but there's a lot in their handbook that goes against this. It just as community as students, we don't approve of this. And I haven't even received it. Yeah. Okay. I have a direct response to this. Okay. Um, we we have, have let me first. motion, let me motion 10 more minutes okay. because yeah. We're in yeah. public comments. So the public talks first. first. Yeah. Okay. No, we have to let them. And yeah. you said motion public comment for 20 more minutes. We still have 15 more minutes. We still have 10, 15 more minutes? Yes. Okay. Let's, the rules let's, don't. Oh, yeah, let's sweet. finish and then we'll go on to the next. Yeah. Okay. Um, I just want to follow up on some of the stuff that Liz was talking about. Um, for those of you that don't know, our department is out here in a lot of pockets and debt. Incidences of. Uh, trying to choose my words carefully because I don't want to trigger people. No, but I think it's true. I'm going to trigger people. We will add. Um, Staff that have been threatened um, in violence and murder by their ex partners. And that is the reason that we're so used to go for some Correct me if I'm wrong. The reason that we had to change our own pocket to get locks on the doors um, because the university wouldn't do anything to protect us literally from the threat of death. We lost students. We lost a student this year at the beginning of the semester. He is literally the backbone of our community. We have gotten nothing from the university. I wish uh, like MSU, some official MSU student, they commented a dove with a heart, maybe announced that we had lost that student. I don't think we have anything. Support. We had to, Dr. Nieto had to go out of her way to get the student care center to come and support us. So we have nothing. Yeah. 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 Department on campus and the community, we just like constantly are dealing with the threat of violence and then there's the institutional racism and sexism. Um, so I just want to like stress the impact of removing Dr. Neto from the chair position is like 
not only the punishment to her in the case of sentence, things like no one have to mobilize about, but it's such a like slap in the face and like active aggression and violence towards these students that like me personally, I'm the one that just graduated last uh, semester. I don't think I would have been able to do it without Dr. Nieto. From her, I have learned more probably from anyone in this university, like general knowledge, but especially how to like carry yourself as a woman of color. Um, how to advocate for yourself in your community and predominantly white institutions. Um, I'm just like in awe of her. I want to say tired, she's tired and she deserves us to stand up for her and have some rest. But still, she always shows up. She always advocates for us. Um, and it's not just you know, the students that she knows personally, but she's always fighting for policies that support the general well-being of all students, but especially the most marginalized students. So her removal is like not only a slap in the face and an act of aggression and violence towards our community, but the campus community as a whole. Mm -hmm. We just have faculty that are also scared of even standing on the because of fear of so backlash and retaliation, so because some don't have tenure, some do have tenure, but also something like they have tenure with the department chair. So this should be scary to everyone in this room and at Kansas University. I think it's very, very important that we address this and not just getting Dr. Nathan to the state, because we're going to do that, it's going to happen, but we also need to address the reasons that this happened and make some policy changes so that we can continue to be here, be protected, and advocate for ourselves and things, much less thrive and contribute to this community in Colorado in general. That's all I'm going to say. Okay. I think you, do you still have? Yeah, sorry. Make sure everyone was heard. My bad. I'll be frank. I'll be just straight up. This is an example of the settler colonial project. This is the settler colonial project as it manifests itself at MSU from its foundation on as a rare, right? It's no coincidence that uh, Dr. Nico is a woman of color in a position of power. I think the system is afraid of that. We're talking about change makers wanted, that's like our motto, right? But we're afraid of change. We're afraid of the righteous anger that the Chicano community has, okay? I've seen examples of white supremacy in the classroom. I've complained about white supremacy in the classroom, and it has gone completely unheeded. It has never been addressed. Except for by Dr. Nielsen. I've talked to Dr. Nielsen about it, and that's a big reason why I'm a supporter of the Chicago I want to be a part of the Chicago State Department. The second a woman of color and position of power takes a step out of line, it is addressed or rectified immediately and harshly by the person in the White House. It's ridiculous. It's just, I think we've said this hardly to our community, it's an act of violence against us. Um, that's why they're here. We want to prevent this. We want to make sure that nothing like your past is We want to try to save somebody who has been an invaluable resource for our community. Dr. Bianco and her Chicago State Department is in the United I'm fighting to be in there because of her. I was meeting with her immediately before her meeting with the dean. And we were talking about. How best I can work in Chicago Studies Department minor into my degree program. We're here for Dr. Nielsen, and uh, we're going to try our bandwidth to save her, and we will be part of that. Okay. Thanks, faculty. Okay. Yeah. Union. Yeah, that would. <laughs> All right, my name is Sheila Nusi. I'm the president of the Metropolitan State Faculty Federation and a professor of political science. And most of my steering committee is here. Most of our steering committee is here. Uh, Dr. Nieto invited us in, passed us in to help support her in this process. 
and I would have it. I attended a meeting um, where she was informed that she was going to be removed from the tray. I have the letter um, that that uh, Dean Nelson wrote, and I'm just going to talk about a few things that are in this letter. Um, one thing that I would like to say is that the union is fully supportive of Dr. Diaz at this point. Uh, our primary mission is to ensure that faculty uh, have their full uh, due process rights respected, their academic freedom rights respected. And we do that well, in part because we're faculty, but, not, but also in part because that's what makes an institution strong. Having faculty who are willing to speak truth to power is what makes an institution strong. And Dr. Nieto um, is at this point a casualty of that. She is being punished not because of her relationship to students, not because of her academic scholarship. Um, it was made very clear in that meeting that she is being removed from the chair because of her speech, because of the way she speaks to power. So I'm just gonna um, get off my soapbox and talk about this. The first thing that I think y'all need to know is that uh, chair position is an at-will position at this university which means that chairs can be hired and removed from the chair sort of outside of that 10 year tenure track process. They are they function as employees, not as faculty per se. Having said that, they are protected by the academic freedom policy that the Board of Trustees approved in 2020. And the academic freedom policy that the Board of Trustees approved says specifically that um, everyone at the university has not only uh, a right, but an obligation to participate fully in shared governance and to criticize institutional decisions when appropriate. That is in the policy, that is in the board level policy. And you are absolutely correct that decisions that have punitive implications must include an analysis of academic freedom. I asked uh, Dean Nasserini in this meeting if he had done that, that process. And he said, no, he didn't have to. When I told him he does have to, he said, fine, I can do that right now. None of this has anything to do with academic freedom. All right, to this letter, um, he cites two causes of action. The first cause of action has to do with the, with the incident that has been described with, with Dr. Nieto and the uh, Human Resources Department. Um, he describes that incident and then he says, um, Outlined areas that need improvement, identifying your tendency to emphasize the negative viewpoint in most conversations. This often leads to comments and tone that are disruptive, unprofessional, and counterproductive to solution finding and a growth mindset. Wait, one clarification. Jean Mazarini said this about her, uh, where she needs to improve? Yes, I'm reading from his letter. Okay, now I'm going to motion for 10 more minutes because we are about to be out. Okay, okay. no, I, I motion for 15. Okay. Okay, I second that. I don't think I got 15 minutes more, but anyway. <laughs> well, anyway, so that Thank is from much. so that is from his letter that he gave her on that day. Um, so that one. The second one is that he he references a program review. Uh, I don't know if you know this. Departments go through program review on a periodic basis. They bring in outside reviewers to sort of identify strengths and weaknesses of the department and make recommendations going forward. And this, this year, kind of China Studies is going through their review process. He notes that um, he had a conversation with the reviewer who observed the lack of leadership in the department, strategic planning, um, this goes on to make a list. After this meeting, I contacted the program review committee and um, asked them about the program review and I was informed, and that was on this day, I was informed that the program review committee has not completed the program review for Chicano studies. So he's lying. Sorry. I'm just telling you what I've said. So um, these these are the two issues that have been identified in this in this letter. Um, the the union fully intends to support Dr. Nieto and do what we can to um, make sure that that this decision is reversed. I'm here to tell you, the reason I'm here today is not for you to tell you, the reason I'm here today is to let you know that while you may feel unheard by the administration, you are heard to a far greater extent than his faculty. They are far more listened to students, are far more likely to listen to students than they are to listen to members of the faculty. They are far more likely to listen to the student government than they are to listen to faculty senate. 
they are far more likely to listen to any one of you than they are to the faculty. It is incumbent, I believe, on you if you not only do you want to protect Dr. Nieto, but if you want to protect the academic freedom of this institution that allows faculty to advocate on your behalf in these countless places where advocacy needs to happen, I think that you need to think seriously about how to organize yourselves to respond to this material. And we are always there available to work with you in any way that you would like to test. I, I do have a couple of questions for all of you. Mike. Oh, well, Naomi. You already know I got a mouthful to say. <laughs> um, first and foremost, I want to thank all of you that are in here and support of her. Thank you so much because it is the students and the faculty that stand up to the university that make the difference. And I think a lot of students tend to feel scared by the hierarchies of the institution and be like, oh, we can't do anything. No, you have to make it happen. Not just facts, no matter how you look at it. Our indigenous community faced so many different roles and disrespect from the institution that I think the first week of my um, spring semester or fall semester, I cried every single day because we just felt so unseen and unheard. And as a student, I would like to real quick just make a little story. I met Dr. Nieto this semester, actually. Um, we went to the Corn Maidens, Corn corn Mothers, Corn Maidens, Corn Mothers, Corn Mothers, corn mothers thank you. Um, uh, event and I spoke with her and the way that she advocates for MMIW which is Muslim Murdered and Indigenous Women a lot of people don't know about that but she advocates from it not only from like the Native American Northern American Native American first tribes kind of era but also the Hispanics as well because guess what we are still indigenous to this land too and people don't seem to recognize that but she did and she made a, I made a point to like introduce myself and she talked to me and told me how we can do things together. And I even forgot to like continue reaching out. And she made an effort to reach out to my professor to make sure that I reach back out to her. Did I? We'll get to that. But <laughs> that's the point though. She was able to do that advocate for someone she just met. And that to me means the world. And I just want to say it here first and foremost, because y'all keep trying to say that it's not about racism. It's about racism. And y'all need to wake the fuck up and start seeing that. And I don't care about my profanity because y'all clearly want to act profound out here in these streets. But then when we go to do it, you want to give us consequences. Right. And I don't think that's OK. You need to sit here and take accountability for the fact that we have teachers who are, let's just say, not ethnically diverse using words like the N word talking about staging and ceremonial practices that they have no place in speaking on in the institution. And then when students speak about it, they don't get any any kind of uh, um, repercussions for it. But yet the one woman of color that comes out and talks about something that is is on her side, in her own personal life, being disrespected by the institution, all of a sudden there's immediate repercussions. When I went through HR with my friend for a sexual assault that happened on campus, and then that took weeks upon months to get that settled to the point to where the person who was working there just quit. But yet it's so quick to happen with, uh, with, with a woman of color who's in a state of power. Tell me how that makes sense. Tell me how that's not about racism. Because it is. And that's facts. And we're going to sit here and act in our cute little pretty lives and say, oh, our, our education is first. It's first and foremost. Like, no, your people are first. Your community is first. But we have this colonialistic perspective of a healthy form of selfishness and a, a lack of mind your business, or I'm sorry, uh, um, an emphasis of mind your business. That now we don't have anybody to sit here and advocate for the people who've been advocating for us since day one. But we're so comfortable in our little spots that we refuse to make these changes within the institution. We refuse to go up and talk to the administration. We refuse to go up and talk to HR because why? It takes too much time. We don't have time for it. It's not in my, it's not any of my business. We have all these content excuses. There's no more excuses. When somebody who is literally a member of an entire community, not just the MSU Denver, but in a community in Denver is having her livelihood put at stake because what a few words that some, I'm, I'm sorry, it's probably just a bunch of white people coming out and saying that like, oh, you're being too aggressive. You're using aggressive language. Okay, how about you check your white fragility and entitlement first? Then let's have a conversation about it because from my understanding, that's the only time we have ever had anybody of color be put in a position where their livelihood is at stake is when somebody who is not ethnically diverse by sent getting offended by the words that we are saying out of passion. And just because we get allowed, we are not angry. We are upset, but we are not angry. We are not trying to hurt you. We, and when's the last time somebody yelled at you and you got a bruise? Like maybe on the inside, but you can get over it. Like that's crazy. You're hurting me. Like, no. Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm, like, you know, it's just, I'm sorry. So I just want you to know we're in support of this. And I may not be in the second semester, but I'm, I'm with y'all and I got on Helica's number so we can we can do things like I'm, I'm yeah. supportive. There's, there's a, we have ideas. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. Um, thank you. I'll just always work on that part. Um, thank you all for coming. 
we have had a show of support with us for a long time that means a lot to us. Yeah. Um, I completely agree with where you guys are coming from. I find the circumstances of the situation are all great. And um, we, Denny and I have met with other students as well. Um, any information, documents, all can provide us. It'd be awesome. Um, with that, I'm, I have an idea on how to kind of investigate this further that we can do. And that's form a task force mm -hmm. to investigate this. Okay. And that's something I don't mind like leading on that fact. And I'd say like yeah. the trust student trustee and the chair. He's our student trustee. He's our yeah, student trustee. Okay, that, I was like highlighting like who do we need to talk to? <laughs> <laughs> so I, I can walk into his office and what are you gonna do? So he gets to talk to me. Okay. I'll bring people's boss. And I and this is the chair. So I am the chair. Well. And okay. I also hold the this year like the presidential internship. So I, I have to meet with Dr. Davidson here soon. Oh okay, so okay, okay. We have yeah. yeah we so can, we can think, we can with that, I motion. He ha wait, wait, hold um, on. There's someone. You have time for one. Just a couple. Oh, go ahead. Please. Please. Yes, please. Yes. Okay. Hi, I'm uh, Gunter Wagner. I'm professor of uh, meteorology and athletics and sciences. Also um, vice president of the union, but um, I'm also co chair of the um, program review So, program review committee, are, we have a group faculty. We met with him, Dr. Pinoposo is here. Um, he came in person um, from Texas. I don't know if some of you, some of you, uh, Elizabeth and others, have maybe you had a chance to meet with him. Yeah, okay. um, the, so we talked, you know, we uh, first, he was here. We have not received his report yet. Um, he came in, if you're convinced, we should give him a month or so to get that. So that this report isn't in um, over. Uh, that our conversation, he was overwhelmingly uh, complimentary of um, both the chair and the department. So uh, there may have been something in terms of um, the contact, um, you know, in terms of an under-resourced university, something you know wasn't happening. But uh, you know, I, I think that's very much out of context and very much premature before we get the report from the. Consultant and then we buy some reports, so that's not coming out for several months. So it's really okay. uh, <laughs> premature to be in here. Uh, so I think that's the main thing I wanted to mention. Well, one thing I mentioned at faculty senate meeting: these the chairs have to follow the rules of the handbook, just like faculty and students have to follow the student code of conduct. And I think we need to be held accountable. Thank you. Anybody else in the room? Like to, um, you're here, you're all you're in support of this, right? Like to well, you're all on the floor. <laughs> Anybody else? I'd just like to say, institutional critique is from here. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. How are you supposed to get better if you don't take on the criticism that it is? To be better? That's yeah. why we have our papers being graded. That's why we take these assignments, why we take these tests, but also we try to do it to you and you think you're all high and mighty. Well, education, education. Chicanos children and I can speak to good old um, Dr. Valenzuela's work, but it talks about subtractive schooling and subtractive schooling means anything that has to do with schooling that subtracts the value of your education. Thank you. Thank you. When it comes to this type of schooling, what Dr. Nieto does is a form of nurturing and caring, and that's what makes us students continue to go on because I am born and raised here. MSU was not my first option. I went to ASU then, or I went to ASU, I went to Arizona State. Yeah. And then I came back because of reparations, because I'm Chicana, but I'm also Native American, and I got my free education. I said, you know what, I'm going to get my free degree. Right. Right. Reparations. And that's right. the only reason why I'm here. But if I had the money to be anywhere else, I wouldn't be here. So it's like I said, it's a Hispanic serving institution, but yet we don't give a damn. So the they're Hispanic active. Chicano Latino students because all of their activism yes. is performative. And to speak to that too, at the Latino I graduation, the dean only showed up for five minutes and left. Like, didn't even stay for the whole entire graduation. Oh, so he can say that he's been there though. Yeah, just to show face. Gina, yeah. she has a cup. Okay.
that. I have also seen how her neighbor was affected by the Okay. okay, we do have to finish it up because we are not, but we appreciate you. Thank you so much for coming in. I think the thing is going to a task. I'm going to let Mike finish this and then we will get back to you by Monday as soon as like, we organize ourselves and then we'll get back to you with this kind of department. Do you want us to send you the information yes. like today? Okay. Yes. Well, we can. I'm happy to ask us or have our secretary to send information. Um, okay. Yes. Okay. Go. I motion that we create a task force that Denny and I will lead to investigate um, the situation. And um, report back to us. I think you know, I can do some damage on this. Can I join? Come on. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Would you, are you going to work not only with yeah, the we'll, students, but also but with the faculty? faculty. Yes. Yeah. So we will, we will get, I will get to Dr. Ritsky. Yes. yes. Great. Well, that's yes. my motion. Yeah. I second that. Yeah. Okay. Thank Every, you guys. We really you. appreciate the yeah. support. We were like, Either we're going to come to be seen or we're going to have to go out and be seen and heard because at the end of the day, the Chicano Studies Department only exists through grassroots, through protesting, and through fighting for change. Because they didn't, if you look us up, you can't find our What is the correct spelling of her name? Her name? Yes. Dr. Adriana Nieto. Spell it. I got it. Say it. I I know. I think it's coming. I think it's in the chat. I think it's in the chat. Okay. Everything you want to see change. Oh, yeah. We're coming for a policy change, too. We're in the works. Got a petition going. We're going to stop here. Sweet. Okay. Let's then we'll have a motion. Then let's go on this task force. Everybody who agrees to this task force, please say aye. Aye. Any opposition? Any abstentions? Awesome. Okay, we will get back to you by Monday. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. And Thank you. you. Can just, yeah, I can send you over the file that I have. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, and thank you all the staff thank you guys. That have support, the faculty. Yeah. Sweet. Okay. Let's. Well, we gotta move it along. We gotta move it along real quick. And just really quickly, our SACAM meeting is going to be at 2.30, so if something happens and we vote to extend the meeting, that's why I'm actually looking for I don't think we will. Okay. Yeah. Um, we're going to, yeah, let's do the other. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Probably. How dare you? I'm gonna say like the nuggets. Uh, open production sake and the constitution lock in. Okay. Well, you kind of have to go on Naomi's thing today, right? Naomi, we have to vote on your thing today, right? But yeah, we have to. First, those were your five minutes of speaking, my friend. That's what I thought. No, because Simpkins is coming out too. Yeah. You got good typing. Is it old business or new business? Can yes. Somewhere else? Okay. Open. No, it is new business. Yeah. Oh. I'm thinking. Okay. Spun out right now. I am going to table the voting. We'll do the voting at the retreat of the new chairs. Yeah. Because. So, can you at least then make a mode? Yeah, yeah, we will. To keep what we're currently doing at Tilden. Yes, we will do that. And then the nuggets. Like, and the Michael. He said he went to the back. Dear Lord, this is not going to happen. Oh, is this my chapstick? Are you off? Um, yeah. And like ending the semester with a bang. Right? She's lovely. 
She's I know. Mastering? Yeah. Like, oh, it's crazy. <laughs> we will, we will talk also, about this. Like, I just want to point out that, like, when the aviation department lost one of our faculty members, like, they died over Thanksgiving break, like, we got a ton of support from the university. So the fact that they're not seeing it is a very clear example of a disparity. <laughs> like, on the racialized. Like, exactly. The person was white. Yeah. So they, yeah. Um, and, like, our, like, most of our degree, I'm going to be honest, is predominantly so the mm -hmm. fact that like we got personalized yeah, emails from our care center to see who's there. when like a lot of people in the department didn't even sweet so that's true. Okay, true. I am going to get I helped them. Don't work. Personal marriage. She reached out to me and I helped her facilitate those things for them. But yeah. I'm so sorry. I have to get it. I'm so so sorry. sorry. No, we just Simpkins is coming up too. Oh God. yeah, that's He's why that's why coming up here. Yes. No, no, uh, virtual. He's coming virtual. So just Simpkins. Okay, let's do this real quick because we have 10 minutes to do all of this. Finish my motion. Okay, let's do it. We are already voted. So let's, okay. So I'm going to motion to do the voting chair thing until for the. What, what are we voting? What are we voting? We're voting to vote, table the chair the chair thing to, to choose the chairs no until change. the retreat. Okay. Until the retreat. Okay. That's yes. Yes. Okay. Oh, let me add on to that motion. Wait, friendly, yeah. friendly. Continuing chairing until you're acting. What's up, Gabe? Oh no, that was gonna be my friendly amendment of not just p postponing the vote, but keeping you. Um, yeah. In yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. Okay, so the motion is to table voting new chairs for the spring semester until uh, or retreat. retreat on January, and in the meantime, I will I will stay as the as the interim chair. A second. I second. Sweet. Everybody who agree. Uh, hi. Hi. Uh, I need to say hi. Oh, hi. <laughs> I'm angry. Okay. I get it. Okay, sweet. So I'm gonna, I'm going to table everything else, but oh, no, I'm, yeah, I'm gonna have to table the, the first one, the Nuggets Day thing, and the volunteer student. Those are my bills. So I'm just gonna take them back just for today. Yeah. Um, Naomi, you, you have five minutes, girl, to present this, this but, thing. Okay, um, y'all ready? Yep. Okay, so a couple of students and I are specifically one student, Hadil. Um, she is from Jordan, and we have noticed that um, the university sent out a unanimous like email mass communication about the war in Ukraine when it happened, and advocating for like the support of students and things like that. Right. Um, however, that was not done for everything that is going on right now between Palestine, Israel, Sudan, and the Congo DRC. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so we are, this is a resolution and a, basically a request for them to do the same for their students. So, um, anyway, the title resolution to request recognition and support for the students affected by the humanitarian crises and war on Israel, Palestine, DRC, and Sudan, as well as done for Ukraine. Myself and Hadil Dahabre is, um, our, the co-authors on this, um, are, are the authors on this. And I had this endorsed by as many students as we could reach out to. And I wanted to make a quick acknowledgement statement um, because we had limited time to do this or else I would have had a lot more student engagement. But anyway, we as the authors of this resolution acknowledge that we are speaking on observations and minimal student engagement due to our limited time frame to address the situation we noticed recently. The important, most important goal for us was to gain recognition for our students affected by these events and also to open up the hard conversations surrounding how we can better support them despite the disproportionate political response. Um, to insist the support of President Janine Davidson and the entire MSU Denver Institute by publicly acknowledging the current world traumas, including attempted genocides in Palestine, DRC, Sudan, and mass civil civilian death, police brutality, if expressed in support for Palestine while residing in Israel, uh, and experiencing public harassment in the U.S. if people are Israeli. Insisting the advocacy from President Janine Davidson for students who are being affected by these traumatizing world events and daily mis misrepresentation for all students affected. Whereas MSU Denver is an HSI MSI that is supposed to be supporting all of its students, the university the university's activism has only ever been used performatively to bolster the university as an inclusive, diverse institution, such as when MSU Denver announced support for Ukrainian students without continuing the efforts to support students who are being affected by increasingly politically uh, divisive issues, as well as cultural 
culturally miscommunicating the previous imp implementation of the Indigenous Peoples Grant publicly without a public clarification. Whereas MSU Denver and President Jean Davidson had failed to stand with Palestine, Palestinian, Arab, Su Sudanese, and Congolian and Israeli students in regards to the genocide that are currently taking place yet swiftly and directly showed support for Ukraine the day after the Russian-Ukraine war began. Whereas Arab, Palestinian, and Israeli students have had an increased personal safety risk while on campus due to the increased racist ideologies since the genocide in these countries has begun. These ideologies have yet to be denounced directly by MSU Denver or President Janine Davidson. Whereas MSU Denver and President Janine Davidson have failed to publicly show recognition and support for students that are being affected by the exploitation occurring in the DRC that is leading to a traumatic mass civilian casualties, which include the exploitation of child labor, sexual assault of women and children, and other extreme oppressive tactics. Whereas MSU Denver and President Jeanine Davidson have failed to publicly show recognition and support for students that are being affected by the current humanitarian crises during the, uh, in Sudan, Sudan, while in which there are massive casualties, <coughs> forced relocation, and destruction of an economy due to a war for power between two alleged leaders. Whereas MSU Denver and President Jeanine Davidson have the authority and accessibility to reach out to our student body in regards to support services relating to the current traumatizing world events whilst maintaining a politically neutral position, yet has failed to do so since these events were brought to the public attention worldwide. Whereas there has been an increase in outward hate towards students of Middle Eastern descent, including Arabs, Persians, and Jews, such as flyers stating, don't be fooled, Hamas is dangerous and coming, racist comments when speaking their native tongue, Arabic or Hebrew, Hebrew, fear to speak the native tongue due to increased racism, which is a safety risk. Therefore, it here be by default. I didn't even say it correctly. Therefore, here be for the result. We are asking for a call to action for MSU Denver and President Janine Davidson to publicly acknowledge and apologize for not showing support for these particular groups of students when they needed it the most. We also insist for a public announcement that MSU Denver does not condone acts of genocide regardless of the country it is taking place in. We want this in the form of a mass email for the student body as done with the email for support for Ukraine, as well as any form of mass social media posts across all departments and all social platforms and offering a safe space in addition to the mental health services already offered by the institution for students to voice their concerns for their safety while on campus. Okay, that was as fast as I could read. I'm sorry. No, no you did it beautifully. Um, okay, cool. So we have, we're going to do the seven minutes and then we'll probably tell the doctors and gets to hold off for five more minutes. Um, okay, so I think the only, I'm, I'm going to start just real quick. The only thing that I'm going to say is you, you want us to send or, or like contact Davidson to ask for this. Yes, we want this resolution and we want this resolution to be sent to her so she can understand that this is an ask of the students or a portion of the student body. And then also TSAC to advocate for it to be pushed. Like we want this to happen. And it means that we don't want an excuse of the political stances to be an excuse. We want her to understand that this is just showing support for the students and you can maintain a politically neutral position whilst doing this. Okay. I feel that you're speaking generally. And so I, in that manner, yeah. there's no Right. Why would there be any any pushback from me? exactly? This is this is my friend Nico. Um, your sibling just left. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's probably falling over. Yeah. Okay. That's yeah. Fine. But we're, we we got into it. I will talk to you. Soon. Thank, Thank you. you. Sorry, dear. Yeah, no Thank you for coming. Um. Okay. Just real quick. I think oh, we'll go ahead and then I'll. Do. Mm. Well, um, I like the way you craft this. Yeah. Um. The tone is very um. Has specialized. It's um, thoughtful the way you've presented this. Mm -hmm. um, I have no issue. That I think it's an easily that Dr. Davidson can do herself. Mm -hmm. um, you can add my name to the endorsement list. Mine too. I was. Do you guys mind? I, I want to say something. Oh, let me just say something real quick. So I, I'm saying, that given that it was beautifully written by students, and this is for students, I think we should have TSAC endorse it rather than mm -hmm. rather than individually. than individually. So like TSAC endorses the, endorses the bill written by students. So and it wasn't written by any of those. Those students, the only ones who wrote this, are me and Pedio. And that's fine. So we will just add TSAC to the endorse by. Like okay. we're endorsing your guys's work. Yeah. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Is everybody okay with that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead, Josh. Yeah, I'm. I'm in agreement with this. I think sometimes we spend too much time trying to rush, 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 rush. But we got to be mindful too, because I was reading with that. But we got to have comprehension while we are speaking. And sometimes we all speak too fast in English, in Spanish. Mas despacio. We've got to slow down. We're, we're, so we're, we're doing it this way because that's been there for four days. That's been in the chat for four days. No, no, I'm, I'm in agreement with that, but I want you all to be mindful going forward. Don't spend so much time with Russian that we don't have comprehension. Okay, that's all I want to say. Okay. Thank you. Okay. <coughs> I, I think so. Oh, great. 
editor in me. And for all of you, like, <laughs> <laughs> after the word is, yes, the first thing is, therefore, hereby, it is resolved. The further comes after that. So it's just resolved first. And then if you have additional things that you want resolved, you put those in as further. That's all I'm just saying. Oh, can you okay. fix that for me, Kenny? I'll take that as a friendly amendment. And I Therefore, <laughs> 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 just take out the word further. Take out the word further. That's it. Therefore, here would be resolved. Okay. Okay. I see what you're saying. That or, and, but that I noticed that a lot. Like, but I think. Cool. Okay. Thank you. I will. I will. I will go change that. That's Sorry. Sweet. Okay. Then I say we will. Uh, I'm in a motion to vote. I second. Okay, let's vote on this. I, I had a second motion. Everybody who agree? Aye. Aye. Emphasis. It feels. Oh, we'll give. We'll give this on. He abstains. Easier for me to give it as a vote. He abstains. Okay. 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 That's he he okay. said abstain. No, if he doesn't vote, he abstains. Oh. Okay, but we pass this. So yeah. Okay. Okay. Great. Um. Oh, is it a crisis? We will send. Okay. We will send this to Davison when we're done. Um, okay. So the next we have. Okay, that passes. And then the next, the only thing that I have is that we have a constitution in it. Uh, it is locking on January the 12th. So we have the whole break to go back at the institution and just make some notes. I'm sorry, I don't want to give you more work, but I do think that it just needs to be patched before the rest of students come in, because I know there was a lot of things. Like the, the the Constitution says go read the manual, but then the manual is invalid. I mean, the handbook, yeah, but then the handbook is invalid. So I was just like, who do I listen to? Right. What am I doing? So I think that, yeah, yeah, that needs to be patched up and brought into the general student population at the end, of, like by the end of next year. So we okay with that? So so I motion that we have an edit lock-in on January 12th of 2024. Say it again slowly. You motion that we have an edit what? A constitution edit lock in on January 12th, 2024. But I have a uh, something else. Okay. Like. Oh, I want to add if you cannot attend this meeting, you still have homework. You should bring something to the meeting. Just send us your notes. Please. Wait, those 12. The 12. I need this. Oh. You got to go to 12 because we had a retreat and the meet. This is two separate days. Yeah. The event is a whole day where if there's time, we can add constitution. Okay, and yeah, working time, okay. but so okay. Okay. in terms of locking it in, that would yes. be at the regular meeting on the 12th, right? Yes, okay, sweet. Okay, so I'm motion that we have a constitution edit lock in on January 12th. I second. Okay, let's vote. Everybody who agree, aye, 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 aye. 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 sweet. Okay, and it passes and just in time. Gabe yeah, can't go back and. Yeah, okay. Hi, Dr. Simpkins. Hello, happy Friday. Happy Friday. Um, yeah, do you uh, mind if we just take a five minute sure. quick? Yeah, thank you. But, uh, we're gonna do a five minute potty break. Yeah, potty break. <laughs> I, we taking, I need water. <laughs> There's more sushi.
Sit down with you sure. and learn some more things. I have a lot of stuff to say. And it's important. We're rushing too much. I see that just feel it. Because comprehension doesn't come from our social platform. We understand by the word has to therefore come. But I'll be more powerful. You sure. know what I'm well, not that I know a lot. Let me just tell you. I just don't don't minimize your wisdom. Okay, but I okay. don't minimize as your wisdom. As that that official governor stuff, I'm not good at it. I really am not. I just know about writing structure and stuff like that mm. because that's my job. Mm. <laughs> I'm a I'm a technical writer for a job at an engineering firm okay. for now before I become a mental health counselor when I graduate. <laughs> I still <laughs> want. I still want to connect. Sure, of course. Okay. You cold? Are you cold? I'm actually not. Oh, oh I just washed sure. my hands. Oh, cold. that's why it's cold. Okay. What was that? It's okay. You, you, quick study. Is it actually? Mm-hmm. Okay. Naomi, where have you been hiding? I haven't seen you in weeks. Weeks and weeks. You know what's funny is I was just, I've been talking about you for weeks because I'm thinking about, well, I'm not thinking, I am going to write up a proposal to kind of create maybe like a temporary position for myself to help y'all in the science department um, to create um, basically a structure of implementing indigenous knowledge within the curriculum, like as in terms of guest speakers and stuff, to build that relationship with the community um, and then also recruitment. And then that community will help boost your your retention rate and then also increase your enrollment rate as well and I've already talked to the chair of the biology department um, a couple professors I've already been working on it with and uh, Desiree as well just to kind of trying to get up there but I want to get to a presentation first and you know see the reality of it but yeah I I was gonna take it to you and Dean Mazzarini first to maybe see if you guys could advocate for me a little bit because it would just be temporary just till I get to grad school but I figure while I'm still here I might as well try to contribute and advocate for the community that you know I'd be loving the most all right. Sounds good. Good to see you. Right, so I'll, I'll be in contact with you soon. Don't worry. Right. <laughs> How are you, Mr. Simpkins? I'm good. My dog um, is standing right next to me because I was eating tortilla chips, and he thinks nice. that anything that's crunchy is a treat for him. First of all, it is. Okay. So, <laughs> well, let me see your puppy. Is it like a big enough dog? So yeah. Hey, buddy. Oh, please. <laughs> Here we go. He's too big to be carrying, that's for sure. He's not <laughs> so tired. Say hi. I really to be like a small dog. I didn't know you were going to no. pick up your whole dog. I, mean, I thought you were gay talking. You sound, you and him sound similar to me sometimes. <laughs> well, you know. Okay. Now okay. It's been five minutes. Thank you, folks. <laughs> Thank you for the intermission. <laughs> All right, okay. We have a, we have a lot. I would, do you have anything for us first, Dr. Simpkins? Anything you would like to update us on? Yeah, sure. I've got a couple things. Um, that are going on at the university level that I just wanted, I I know you know about all of them, but I just wanted to remind you how important your voice is in a few processes. Um, So the first is the university's budget process is really starting. uh, It'll pick up a lot of steam in January. Um, That's the up back committee. And I think y'all have a representative on it, but I just wanted to underline that is one of our most important shared governance structures at the university for deciding where to put resources and vetting, um, uh, looking at things like tuition increases, fee increases, all of that happens in the up back uh, committee. Um, The second is I wanna thank you for your involvement. I think some of you attended a C2 hub um, uh, space session where you gave us some great feedback on the layout and the design. The master plan for AHEC is happening at the same time. So lots of stuff going on with just the campus design and campus infrastructure. So thanks for your involvement in that. 
the legislative season is starting. So the Colorado legislature will officially go into session in January, but several of the committees have already started meeting. Dr. Davidson will be at the Capitol next week for our annual joint budget committee, um, uh, or excuse me, this one I think is the Capital Development Committee. So that's for our um, building requests for the Health Institute and the C2 Hub. There's also the Joint Technology Committee, uh, which is we do have a big multi-million dollar request there to modernize our technology infrastructure. And then the budget, the higher ed budget setting will happen in um, January. And then after that, tons of hearings, tons of conversations, whether it's about our budget or about specific <laughs> bills that individual legislators are running um, that we want to testify on. Um, thank uh, Will for his involvement in the student success launch. We're making some good progress there. I think y'all are going to be happy with some of the new um, resources and technology stuff that we're, we're working on. And then and I just wanted to put in a plug that um, AHEC is really focused on policy writing right now. And I just saw a policy that I shared with Cynthia and Taylor to share with you all on event flyers and chalking on campus. It's an interim policy. My preference is always that AHEC vets those policies or, or writes those policies with SACAP, with TSAC, um, but they're not doing that. And so I'm pushing them to, to be better in that um, process. Um, but just, that was just a plug for me to say like, I'm on it. I know it's painful for you. It's painful for me. Uh, and together we'll hopefully create something new. So that was all the top line stuff in my head, but sounds like you've, you want to grill me, which is great. <laughs> um, okay, I'm gonna let Mike go first, and then we'll, we'll go down. But it, it's about option yet, yeah, that's fine. Well, but yeah, though I mean, we all we're all on it. Yeah. So, pardon my voice, Dr. Simpkins. Uh, having some voice troubles, but it's fine. So, um, you weren't here earlier, but we have uh, had a lot of students and faculty and alumni come in and give public comments regarding the, the removal of Dr. Nieto as the. Um, as the chair of the Department of Chicano Studies, uh, so much so that we as student government have decided to form a task force led by myself and Denny to investigate the situation. And me. And, and Naomi too, yes. So we would like to hear from you, from you what have you heard and what um, perhaps materials do you have that could aid in this, this process? Or advice in general. Or advice in general. Yeah. You know, I, first of all, I appreciate um, that folks came to public session because I know that's that doesn't always happen with TSEC. So anytime people do show up for any of our open meeting public sessions, it I take it seriously because it to me it says this is an issue that has risen um, to the level of, of strong concern from from members of our community. Um, this is going to be a difficult one because it's a personnel issue. Um, so obviously I can't say anything about the specifics. I also don't know a lot about any of the specifics. I know that it happened. That's about all I know. Um, uh, I would encourage you before you form a task force to speak with Dean Mazzarini and Provost, uh, Interim Provost Mora to better understand our policies around department chairs and um, Again, they're not going to be able to give you specifics, but they can talk about uh, what are the types of things that um, would cause a chair uh, to to not be a chair um, any longer. So that's my only advice would be just to speak with Dean Mazzarini and the provost before you go too far down one road. Yeah, and that's the goal of the task force um, is yeah. to do so. Um, my goal was to reach out to Dr. Mora as well. Um, okay. Though this is a personnel issue, it sounds like there's a lot of there's a lot of concerns that um, due process wasn't followed. There's a lot of concerns that like this issue um, isn't really like I mean, so it's HR. It doesn't sound like it was handled in the correct way, and that's where we're concerned, student government. And I understand it's personnel personnel related. We're also shared governance on this institution, and we can 
demand things of administration as well as our faculty. And from what we've heard, there's going to be it. Like we're just warning you guys now. It's going to get a lot worse because student mm -hmm. groups are going to be involved. SDS might be getting involved. So we're just warning you now. And, and this is us kind of trying to get our bearings before the storm. So I'm just throwing that out there to you. My goal is to request an audience with Dean Mustard and um, interim provost Mora as well. OK, I will give them a heads up that you're going to reach out. They may reach out to you, you know, before you reach out to them. Um, so I, I just I appreciate the back and forth of information. Yes. I appreciate it. Sure. I think that is the biggest thing we have for you. I, that has definitely like taken over TSAC's priorities at the point, like at the moment, the fact that there were so many students that showed up and and faculty. and faculty was here too uh, and then they did the research and they have a very sound argument it definitely takes a precedent and priority over like a lot of the things that we had going on today oh uh, i do have a question okay I John, well i have kristen too in the stack so let's do john kristen i'm going to join the task force as well because there needs to be some kind of training on how people are getting offended just because people are making general statements about what's going on from a person of color. And we need to start doing something around the energy of how people are perceiving things, because that's gone on long enough. That's but that is, that, is, that is the whole point of the task force. We're, we're investigating. We're no, no, the whole point of the task force is Don't handling me. the situation with Dr. Nieto. Exactly. This is a much bigger task that would include something more than just critical dialogue or anything mm -hmm. like that. This is like a bigger training that needs to be implemented in time. I agree. Of that, policy change. But, but the, the task force specifically is to investigate what happened with Dr. Nieto, and then we go from there. Yes, is to yes. give some solutions to No, I'm going to be on the task force too. However, we need to start really thinking about this is a scenario that keeps popping up and so people who are getting offended just because people are communicating how they're feeling that has to stop and there's ways that that can be done i'm doing i'm getting on the task force too um well my question specifically for dr simpkins was surrounding if the university uh, to your knowledge um, around these specific kinds of issues, such as like the removal of chairs, is there any formal like complaint process or way to contest the removal of a chair in terms of like actual yeah. established policy? Mm -hmm. Good question. You're, you're yeah. muted. I'm muted. Sorry. <laughs> you think after like five years, I would have learned. Um, there is a formal complaint process, which uh, if you're not familiar with, Cynthia and Armando can get you the link to the Dean of Students page, which um, would be where you can make a complaint against a department, an individual, um, another student. Uh, and um, if it's an academic, so if it's about your grade or your your role in a class that goes through the dean and the department chair, but anything else goes through the dean of students office. But I'm not sure that's the process that you would want to use in a situation like this. What I will say is, um, to my knowledge, uh, department chairs serve at the pleasure of their dean. They are administrators. And so in their capacity as a department chair, acting as an administrator, they do not enjoy the same um, process that a faculty member uh, enjoys when it comes to things like tenure, promotion, um, questions of academic freedom that, that may come up in the academic um, uh, arena. So it's important to, to separate the due process that faculty are afforded in their role as a faculty member from the due process that Cynthia and I and other administrators and, and department chairs would be included in that, enjoy as administrators and staff of the university, which is very different from, from faculty. I am not an expert in this space at the university, so I think if, if you wanna dig in and as you're digging in, you wanna talk to smart people who are experts in this space. The general counsel, the provost, the dean would be three really strong informants um, for you to, to, to speak with. Um, 
the university can never share details of personnel action publicly. Um, and so anytime you see a personnel action take place, you know, because of federal and state privacy laws, we're never going to be able to comment about the specifics. So we're always going to have to talk in generalities about process, about policy, sometimes hypotheticals about if this sort of thing happened, this sort of uh, reaction would take place. My caution to you as a shared governance group is right now you've heard one side of a situation. It's important for you as a representative body of the students to understand multiple perspectives. And so if, if it's in the form of a task force that you get a group of people um, together to learn, um, to better educate not only yourselves, but other students about how these things grow, that is great and that is within your purview and I encourage you uh, to do that. But <coughs> what I want to pull you back from is um, too quickly having a perspective or a recommended set of actions without understanding all the different um, variables that are at play. I'm not saying you don't. I'm just saying I think this happened earlier this week, and so it's still new for a lot of folks. Um, and so we just have to sort of try to see that big picture. Um, and I'll support you however, however you need me to support you. Thank you. I, um, I just had a quick question about like, so uh, with that being said, kind of about the um, the legalities of not being specific about the situation and things like that. Um, when, because I know even if it was recorded, we're not going to have access to it. So does that mean that the meeting that happened between her and HR, was it recorded then? Again, I was not in the room. I'm not. Um, yeah. Okay. So I, I think we understand that there uh, there's a lot coming in from the policy and uh, you know the institution side and and I I fully truly believe that the the admin is doing whatever they they can to protect the institution, but I think we are forgetting that that the students make the institution from from the looks of it. Um, so although we are gonna go and look for both sides, I think we are still gonna come very much with our student identities at the mm -hmm. forefront of this. Yeah, and yeah. what is yeah. convenient for for us as students. Mm -hmm. So yeah, this is just a. What comment, yeah, Mike? You should. I mean, that's your that's your role as student leaders. Absolutely. And let me add on to that. Actually, in our in our meeting that I'm going to request with Dean Mastery and Dr. Mora, um, what we're going to do is go in there and explain. Hey, students, lots of students, faculty, alumni, have brought us these concerns. We're going to tell them the concerns. If we're going to go into that meeting and they're not going to tell us anything. And what's the point? The task force is just to investigate. Yeah. And then furthermore, we can add resolutions. I mean, I serve on the board trustees. Um, Dean Mastrini is in that room. Um, I will be will be sharing the results of that investigation with the board trustees coming up soon. And they, they will be known that students are angry about this. Yeah. yeah. So like that's a voice right there on the board trustees that I have. That's a power I will use and as well. Like if we're able to reach a larger group of the student body like granted we had like a cute number of students in here today and i don't mean cute in a sense of like it wasn't enough but like to make a big impact on something like reinstating a chair we're gonna need bigger numbers and that's just facts i think and i i think just, just to mike's point the, the whole point of requesting a meeting with, with uh this uh part of admin it more than you know going and making a fuss about it it's to give them the opportunity to explain to us their side of why a uh, community and campus feels so hurt uh, and if they're not willing to then provide an answer or to provide that the due process was respected then that's when the like that's when the escalation of, of like the moment starts but like we are giving admin the opportunity to explain to us and the student population what happened because people are angry 
But what I want you to know, <clears throat> the person who is the subject of a personnel action is free to say whatever they want to whomever they want. We as a state agency can never tell you what happened specifically unless that person, I think, I think this is true, unless that person files some sort of like waiver of privacy or something. So I just want to caution you around and, and, and sort of set realistic expectations. You are not going to be told exactly what happened. You will be told what the process is, what the protocols are, and what the policies are around, in this case, removal of a chair. But I want, I just want you to understand, like, it's not that we're the big bad administration or that we just don't want to make ourselves look bad. This is state law that we cannot violate. If Cynthia or I lost our jobs tomorrow, we could come into your meeting and say, this is unfair. They fired me. I, I didn't do anything wrong and I want you to support me. And if I had embezzled $10 million, the institution couldn't tell you that I had embezzled $10 million and that's why I got fired. And that's not at all what I, I'm, I'm, I picked a really bad example. That is not at all, I think, what we're talking about. But um, I just wanted to give you a, a, a sense of like the, the specifics of personnel action are known to the organization and to the person that it happened to. The only one that's allowed to talk about that publicly is the person that it happened to. Does that Dr. make sense? Simkins? Yes, it does make sense. I just think there's there's an extra point of sensitivity here with these students, these marginalized students in this it, academic community who were who are and have been led by this chairperson, is that right? Yeah, yeah. And um, with not much explanation, you know, are feeling really let down by the university as a whole, mm -hmm. whatever the policy. And so yeah. there needs to be some kind of way around that for their satisfaction as far as understanding what happened and hopefully yeah. for reinstating. I mean, they do have the support of the faculty union, right? And the they were making statements and had had done some um, inquiry around why um, things had happened. And there was some sort of like, we'll get this information and I'm sure our, our representatives will give this to you. But basically, it seemed that there wasn't a, a complete review of the um, department. And but it was stated that there had been. And so there, there were things that were misstated. Um, and maybe misrepresented, but the understanding from the students and the faculty that were here, and we had people sitting all over the floor. I mean, there was nowhere for people. Um, there, people are very hurt and upset, and you have to consider this marginalized um, group, particularly as, and as they said, you know, we are this Hispanic serving institution, and this Chicano studies group is feeling absolutely let down. They're more than let down. They're pissed off. It's not even. That's, it's off. not even. It's not even just that. They're pissed, exactly. and they showed up in numbers exactly. yeah. and began to explain different interactions of how they had quality moments with this particular person that's on chair that helped continue their stay at MSU. <laughs> so they were very passionate about what they were saying. And it's not even that they're. They're. I mean, yeah, they're pissed off. They're traumatized once again. A marginalized mm -hmm. community that is supposed to be and a part of an HSI, MSI institution is once again traumatized. And I'm more worried for the university because don't get me wrong, like MSU has its flaws, but like it really does be like trying to do its best for students to earn their degree in like the economy that we have, right? But we can't continue to do performative activism when we're gonna sit here and say that we're, you know, this HSI, MSI, but then we're just tokenizing these individuals and then putting not only just this incident with uh, Dr. Nieto, but also like they had safety issues going on with their building that has been put on them instead of the university. Um, you know, like we, they're, they're traumatized. They are traumatized. And that is the only word that is going to be able to put everything that they're feeling into one word. 
and that's that's not okay and i'm i'm scared for the university because if this makes it out like you did with the indigenous people's grant it's going to decrease your enrollment rates again it's going to decrease the retention rates like we're going to start to accust be accustomed to change makers wanted but with no compensation for becoming that you know what i mean and we don't want that because i don't want msu to get shut down but they're going to get canceled with the culture that we live in if we do not start to stand up for the students that we're supposed to be <laughs> the most. and yeah yeah i was just i'm sorry i'm just dumbfounded by how this is all happening and what i'm saying is um get all of the information before yeah you all make recommendations. So do your due diligence, meet with all the folks that you need to meet with, understand all the policies, programs, processes to the extent that you can, try to get that information, and then where you see opportunities for us to do better, absolutely we wanna know. But I'm cautioning you, because I'm, I'm hearing your um, passion, which I love, 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 um, I just want to make sure that you're doing your due diligence. But Dr. But Dr. Passion without persistence is, is null and void. I, I hear exactly what you're saying about the caution, but you also let us know that because of the policies, people are not going to tell the truth or the inf we might not get the correct information. So what I still no, want to say- No, stop you right there. I did not say people wouldn't tell the truth and I did not say people would not get correct. the correct information. There's information that they cannot by law share with you. Got you. I stand okay. corrected. Okay. Yes, Michael. Yes. And I have to motion to extend the meeting by 10 minutes. Guys. Well, this is, this is my last call. Matter. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, Dr. Simpkins, you know, uh, Denny and I are chairing this committee. We're pretty, you know us well enough. Mm -hmm. We, you, you don't need to even mention due diligence because we, we, we will do the due diligence. Yes, you don't right. need to worry about that. We will get the information and anything you have to help us with that would be greatly helpful. Um, right. We're just telling you after the fact that this is what's going to happen. Because yeah. we, as we've voted, that's a unanimous thing. Yeah. As Jim Cummins voted. Though we might not get all that information, student government, students can absolutely have an opinion on this. Absolutely. Because we are, we we are the biggest stakeholder at this university. We just yes. don't want to blindside you. Correct. You've always been there to like support Correct. the things that we need. And we truly like genuinely are gracious for our gracious. Um grateful for that. Uh, but we want to make sure that like you're not blindsided by this. So if anyone's like, oh, right. do you know anything? You're like, yes, I knew this is what the students told me. This is what yeah. TSAC told us. So yeah. Correct. Yeah. So just so, thank you. so yeah, D Denny and I will do our due diligence. No need to worry about that. Um anything you could help with this matter would be greatly appreciated. Yeah, um, I can make some connections. Appreciate it. Thank you. So Thank you. can I have a point of clarification? Yes, please. Will, will you be making those connections to Marie and John, or do we you can, want me to be we involved? Can send, we can send emails. as well. We, can, you we like. can start it and just keep CC both of you. Yeah, We're yeah. okay with We that. have an email starter already. So. Yeah, and, and the, in fact, I would rather us start the conversation. Correct. Um, yeah, and then have you guys CC'd on it because if this was a personnel issue, like I don't think you you as a personnel should be sort of like leading this. This is very much a student led issue, and yes. and I, I I want you guys to be aware, but also like this will be led by us. Yeah, we students. want to keep y'all safe, like yeah. professionally speaking, because then if we have you on our team a little too much, like more as anything more than guidance, kind of like personnel then it yeah. will leave you in a position for your professionalism to be questioned. And that'll also leave us with like perspectives of biased opinions. And we don't want that either. We yeah. want people to know that like this is, you guys aren't putting us up to this basically, or you're yeah. not like aiding in yeah. like either yeah. side of it, just literally guiding us on like the policies, procedures and connections. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I really appreciate that. It is also our job to make sure that you have the support and resources that you need to do your job. And so <laughs> as you go through this process, if you need Cynthia, myself, Armando, if you need our support to reconnect with someone, if someone's not being responsive, like reach out and, and we will facilitate as much as we can. Thank you, Dr. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Simpkins. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Well, I think I think well. that is <laughs> from us, Dr. Simpkins. Is there anything else on your side? Uh, is anybody graduating? 
on next Good, Friday. Naomi. Naomi. All right. All right. I better see you on that stage. I'll try not to trip you. Um, well, but <laughs> while we're on, yeah, uh, while we're on the official, like extended TSAC meeting, um, here's what I want to say. Naomi, you have been an incredible Roadrunner leader. I have worked with you now almost two and a half years. Um, I have witnessed you um, harness your voice. I have witnessed you be a true representative of other students and of communities. I have witnessed you holding us accountable. Um, and I just wanna say how proud we as an institution are of you and that you chose us. Um, and you are gonna leave a real legacy at this university. I'm getting a little misty eyed here. You are leaving a legacy that will extend far beyond the time you actually spent on this campus because of your leadership. And so I'm just so grateful to have learned from you and to be in community with you. So congratulations. I will not trip you, but I will scream. <laughs> you are Thank you so much, Dr. Hurtis. I really appreciate it. And all the you know, all the things that you've taught me and all the things that you've taught me here as well in navigating these systems and learning how to uphold um, you know, the advocacy work that I am genuinely passionate about. Um, I really try my best. So thank you so much for helping me navigate these spaces and being um, you know, a guidance for me. So I really, really appreciate that. Um, and never make me feel like I'm stupid to ask these questions or take on these initiatives, but always to encourage me, even if like you may disagree with the way or emotional mannerisms that I may have. <laughs> I really appreciate being supportive, even if we disagree on things. So thank you so very much. Absolutely. See you all next week. Cheers today. Sounds good. Okay. Good. We we don't need quorum to finish the meeting. So thank you, Dr. Thanks, Dr. Jenkins. Bye, well. We just end the meeting. Yeah. 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 We'd be beefing, but he's cool. <laughs> <laughs> Are you happy?